Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on the potholder loom. And uh, we are um, we've, we're in a series where we've um, worked these five different uh, potholder designs, and now we're going to work another one today in another plaid. Uh, there's a couple of different types of plaids here that we've been doing. Um, one's kind of a small check plaid, and then we got this sort of larger version and this sort of medium version. And then we're going to do one that's a little bit smaller. It's just different. Uh, so it's going to be a two color. And uh, we will reveal that as it goes. So I'm going to start setting up the warp, uh, which is uh, the vertical part here. And for some reason, it's acting a little dark. So let me move my camera just a little bit here. See if that's going to help anymore. While we have everyone joining us. I'm not sure why. Does it seem dark to everyone? It seems dark. I'm not really sure what the deal is. Um. Oh. Good morning, everyone. I may have to start it again. Does it seem really dark to you guys? I'm not sure why. This is the same setup as before. I can edit this part out, but I'm having a difficulty because my lighting is moving. So hold on. This is very strange. Hold on, sorry guys. It's not normal. <laughs> okay. I can edit that part out later, but it still seems really dark. It doesn't look dark to you guys. That's so strange. Okay. Okay, it is on my end. All right, I'm going to edit this part out later. There's just now a glare, and I can't see what you guys are saying. All right, we're about to start. Well, hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on the potholder loom. We are going to do a two color plaid today, and uh, this is one of the last plaids we're going to do in this series, and there's a ton more you can do uh, just to take you through the few that we did here. And then here's us like a very small plaid. And then we have one kind of medium here and then a bit larger here with three colors. Uh, we're going to kind of do a play on this one. So it's two color and it would kind of go well with this one. Um, it, we're basically what you're doing is you're taking this little checkerboard part of the plaid and moving it to the center and in both uh, on both sides. So you're going to have sort of like this plus mark of plaid and then a solid here in one color and then solids on the corner. So let's begin. I'm going to set these aside. So what you need for this is you need um, uh, 12 of one color and 24 of the other. And the, um, the warp, the vertical part, you're just going to take half of your uh, cotton loops and set them aside, okay? So these will be used for the weave, okay? And then these here, we're gonna set them up in the middle, all right? So we just need the middle uh, six stitches. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's 18 across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you guys can see that. There we go. I'm gonna try not to move that. And then just set them all the way across here until you run out of loops. I think this is the easier way to do it. Five and six. Okay, 
And then now we're going to put on the um, the second color. So um, color A, color B, it doesn't matter. Um, this, this one is the one that I'm using. The main color is uh, yellow here as my color A. But again, like I said, I set up color B first. Let me just trim these here. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the uh, warp setup, the vertical part on the rest of these. Okay, so we've got our warp, all verticals, ready to go, and we can get our tools out uh, if you want to use those, or again, I like to use my fingers. So uh, we're going to set up the weave exactly the same as we did here, so if you want to set them aside, you can do six on either end. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six up top and then six in the middle of the other color. So it's exactly the same warp and weave. So we're just going to start the over under part. And it's harder to see uh, when it first starts begin uh, when it first begins because it's solid. So you may not be able to see the contrast and then all of a sudden it'll start popping through when you get to this other color here. Right, just like that. Trim up this loose part here. Got a couple of little straggler tails. There we go. All right, and then we do the opposite over here. We're going to go over where we went under and vice versa. Making sure not to twist our loops. The loom again is the large potholder loom from Cindy Wood Looms at uh, premiumknittinglooms.com and the loops were from her as well you can also go to harrisville.com and get them so now I'm still with the same color here the same yellow over under alternating not changing anything about the weaving over under technique uh, and alternating each row. So you can start to see that small little check appear and then the sides look solid. And then we have um, our moderator, uh, Good Knit Kisses, uh, moderating comments and stuff. So she'll she'll drop uh, links in the uh, comments there, and we'll have more in the description on where you can get these, as well as see the other videos. We'll be bringing you a few more of these um, designs in the next few weeks. I've really been enjoying uh, making these with you and uh, several people have commented that as well. It's a fun task with your family at the holidays. Sometimes it's just nice to do a quick project that you don't have to fuss with for very long and get it turned around. It's it's really nice to break up. Um, if you've got a big, large project going on, like a sweater or an afghan or something a bit more complicated, it's nice to just kind of stop, make something like this, and uh, 
you know, switch gears for a minute. Okay, so I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, just make sure. So I've still got my other six here. I know I've got these done because I had pre-sorted them. And now we're ready for the purple or the opposite color. So it'll start making the checkerboard over here now. Oh, this one's really stringy today. And then once we hit the purple in the middle, we'll start seeing that solid. Isn't that nice? So. Get to the second color in here. And you could uh, make a larger piece um, doing the opposite. So say you wanted to um, do a series where you had um, nine squares, so where you had uh, squares on either side of this and then up top and down below, you could do the opposite where you have 24 of uh, this color here and 12 of this other color and flip flop them and so it has like a cool checkerboard, uh, a larger checkerboard effect with these smaller checks inside. You really get a fun effect. And then if you, of course, if you made them all the same, then it would um, have a completely different look. Almost done with this color. Last loop. I think it's satisfying to see it come along. And then of course it draws in. It's about a seven by seven size. 7 inch by 7 inch, give or take a quarter inch or so. Okay, we'll get this last color on here. Isn't that fun with that on there? You can see it coming along. This is a, a fun school color project with this bright purple and, and yellow. And of course they're contrasting colors so they really, really get that extra kick. Oh my goodness. I'm going to call you Mr. Harry. Hey, Mr. Harry. <laughs> Mr. Harry was our mascot colors here. 
All right, so I'm getting near the end. It's easier to twist them up, uh, these strands, uh, when it gets towards the end. It's kind of easy just to just make them go really fast and start flipping them over. Just be careful to make sure they lay nice and flat. You don't twist them up. It really does make a difference in the final look. It just has, you know, it's such a quick project. It's, it's not one that's a big a deal if you have to go back and like undo something, make a correction. Right, I have two more. You can see how tight it's getting here. It's really coming together. Look at this middle section here with this last little checkerboard going on. Okay, we have one more loop. I gotta get right in there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start using my little tool. <laughs> a little overshoot there. There we go. Now. Okay. That's in there pretty good. I think I got it. Nearly there. Okay. And that is the last one. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so uh, now we're just going to take these off <clears throat> and start. Excuse me. Hold on. <clears throat> So now we're going to take these off and start um, crocheting along the edges with our crochet hook. And so we just pick them up. It's just an easy chain. It's not like a full crochet. Just pick up any of the loops along the side and then the next loop and then lift one over the other, the back loop over the front loop. And now you're ready for the next one. Pick the next one up, lift up and over and continue going. Oh, and you can hear him. my dog. Isn't that lovely? We have someone coming over. <laughs> She's going nuts. So now that I've come down to the end, I'm going to go ahead and get the tension back on here because these other, uh, these other pegs are pulling on it. So I'm just going to grab one of these, pull back on here, keep this tension get towards the, uh, the last two sides. It will uh, be nice and stable. And again, as I showed in other videos, you can do a couple of loops pulled over uh, just for a little more stability and that works too. All right. So we come to the next side, exactly how we've done before. Keep going. And you've got this nice little crocheted edge here, or chained edge with the little stitches kind of in a V shape there. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. Yeah, she's going nuts. Poor kid.
I need to get this one tight again. So let me pull that on here. I did a little too late, but it'll be fine. And I can uh, work these out in the end. If, if you've seen me do this before, um, it'll it'll still be fine. I can work that out. I just basically work it back in a little bit with the tension before I finish it off. If you saw me give it a little tug here, sometimes I get a little, <laughs> a little impatient. I want to see it all like pulled out. So I start messing with the tension before I'm actually towards the end. I know, I'm weird. Okay. I have to keep checking them in the frame because there's a glare on my screen now. Okay. Coming towards the end, make sure to grab a couple more. That's really on there good. And even though I'm kind of twisting my, uh, my loom around, I'm still going straight down the middle through that loop in the same approach. If you pull it from under and that's how you like to do it, then just continue to do them all the same way so they're not twisted and they all line up the same direction. And uh, I may not have said this before in another video, but uh, you may notice that the um, the chain is not exactly straight. It kind of m moves back and forth, and that's just because of the warp and the weave working together. So it's not exactly flat, but over time it it uh, it evens out, especially with washing and stuff. Okay, so this is. Holding on nicely. Oh, last one of the purple. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick moment. You can see I have a whole bunch of these little, um, I keep calling them hairs. Mr. Harry needs a shave. <laughs> he needs a trim. Or she. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so I've got one last on the loom. Take that off. And now we can take off all the other ones, and they're really pulled out. That's okay. So now I'm just going to start pulling and stretching this a little bit, getting that back into shape. And the opposite side can kind of pull on that stitch. I just call it hand, this hand blocking. It's not an official way to block, but hand blocking uh, really gets you into the shape that you want to see, and then you can make any changes. So once I've got that pulled out, I'm going to trim any more. Little strays. This little guy cracking me up. And then we'll finish off that loop. Okay, don't worry, all this trimming doesn't do anything bad to it. Okay, so we have the loop. Again, you can use the loop for hanging. Uh, I would suggest if you use it for hanging, then you. Um, go ahead and pull the loop back through onto itself. Uh, that way it's uh, secured in there, okay? Or you can tuck it in, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, so I just pull it in on itself and then go underneath the next weave there. And then in between two of them, just tuck that last bit in underneath. And of course, this is all the same color right here, so it tucks really nice. If you had the opposite color here, then you'd wanna um, try and tuck it under the one of the same. But it is totally reversible, looks super great. And then we have a nice, kind of a medium-sized plaid there. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial today. Love it, um, getting some great comments, loving the colors and the pattern. 
Um, yeah, I am totally hooked on these. Um, we have a few more of these, and then we're going to go into some other uh, tutorials, of course. Uh, we have way more planned in the new year. I'm going to be making an announcement on uh, YouTube as to what is going on with Good Knit Kisses going into the year 2020. And so be sure and stay tuned for that. We will continue to have live videos every Friday, continuing on uh, on Facebook. Um, so we will continue to do those. So n have no fear. And we will start moving our videos onto YouTube uh, in the mornings, uh, starting in the new year on Saturdays uh, for my time. And, uh, and you'll, you'll hear more about that, uh, coming up. So be sure and go to Good Knit Kisses, uh, YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Good Knit Kisses and hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon. So you get notifications, uh, and a little tip, go ahead and click the word join. If you would like to join and become a member, memberships are going to be incredibly important in the new year. So be sure and check that out. If you do join, there's already a video telling you what is up? I hope you guys have a great day. Be sure and tune in to our video uh, and uh, blog this afternoon. You're not going to want to miss it, especially if you love crochet. But uh, have no fear. I will be having a loom knit and needle knit version later on. You guys have a great day. Happy knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone. And uh, haha, weaving. Bye, y'all.